Madam Chairman. Senator Feinstein, and we look forward to working with you on that part of it. Senator Alexander. Thanks, Madam Chairman, and uh, General Holder, welcome. It's good, good to see you. I was thinking about a conversation we had during your confirmation about Griffin Bell, for whom you worked, and I know you admired him, and I, I certainly admired him. I was a law clerk on a court when he was judge, and one of the things he used to say, and, and which I've heard you say, I think, too, is that the Attorney General is the uh, lawyer for the United States, not just the lawyer for the President. So in, in the following up Senator Graham's comment on the so-called recess appointments, I wanted to ask you a question. If, if as the lawyer for the United States, if the if the president called you up and said, uh, General Holder, I uh, I noticed that the Senate's gone to gone into recess for lunch. I've got a Supreme Court nominee I want to appoint. Can we put him on the court without their advice and consent? What would your answer be? Going to lunch? Uh, that would not be a sufficient recess. Well, what if he said they're going to lunch? They're going to recess for lunch and for dinner, and they won't be back until tomorrow. Would that be a sufficient recess? Well, I mean, I, I think what we're getting at, I mean, if you look at that OLC opinion, um, they would be... No, I'm asking your opinion, Mr. Mr. Attorney General. Well, I, I associate myself with that OLC opinion. Does that mean you agree with it? With the OLC opinion? Uh -huh. Yes. You do agree with it? Yes. Then, then that means that the President, not the Senate, can decide when it's in session for purposes of, a, of, a, uh, of advice and consent? Well, I think one has to look at the reality, the totality of the circumstances in determining whether or not the Senate is actually in session as that term has historically been used and the determination made by OLC was that given the... Well, if, if we look at that, Mr. President, was your deputy solicitor wrong when he told the Supreme Court in a letter that uh, two years ago that the Senate may act to foreclose recess appointments by declining to recess for more than two or three days at a time? And was Senator Reed wrong in 2007 when he, when he really devised the plan for pro forma three-day sessions because he, he said he heard that President Bush was about to make recess appointments? And Senator Reed said on July 28, 2000, well, November 16, 2007, with the Thanksgiving break looming, the administration has informed me they want to make several recess appointments. As a result, I'm keeping the Senate in pro forma to prevent recess appointments until we get back on track. And the next year he said, we don't need to vote on recess. We'll just be in pro forma session. We'll tell the House to do the same thing. President Bush didn't like it, but he respected it. So are, are you saying that the president, not the Senate, can decide when it's in session for purposes of a recess appointment? I think one, the, what we have to do and what we have done in this OLC opinion is look at history, look at precedent, look at the law, uh, use some common sense when it comes to the approach of whether or not the Senate is actually in session. And well, well, was Senator Reid wrong? Well, the determination that we made here was that with regard to those that 20 days in which those pro forma sessions were occurring, that those were in fact... But the Senate had decided it was in a three-day session according to the Reid formula, so was Reid wrong about that? Well, I have, I'd have to look at exactly what occurred during that three-day period, but given what the facts that we presented to the OLC, to OLC in this instance, I think the determination that they made was, uh, was correct. So the president may not... Uh, so I, I don't see why the president couldn't uh, look at the Senate and say, uh, I'm going to send up a Supreme Court justice and I, I'm going to skip advice and consent. I, I'm, I'm astonished by this, really. I, I, and I would think Democratic as well as Republican senators would honor the Reed formula that President Bush honored. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Senate did the very same thing in January, and the President nevertheless made four appointments during a time when constitutionally he shouldn't have, according to all the precedent that I've seen. The only thing I, I, I correct is that the determination was not made by the president. The determination was made by the Office of Legal Counsel and then shared that opinion with the president, and the president made the decision as to what he wanted to do. He made the decision not to, not to respect the Senate's decision about when it's in session or when it's not, which to me is a blatant lack of regard for the constitutional checks and balances and something that we ought, ought to avoid. Uh, may, I, may I ask... Quickly, a question. Last year, uh, the department found money to support uh, the work against methamphetamine, and, and I compliment the department for that. I know it's getting increasingly harder. In our state, we had the highest number of meth lab seizures in the nation. Uh, the money's running down. The state's increasing its funding. Will the department again be able to try to help states that are working on this as you were able to do last year? 
But we are certainly going to try to do as, as best we can. I know one of the things that we have certainly seen with regard to uh, the cleanup of meth um, sites is that there have been a number of uh, these container um, activities. Uh, and I think, as I believe, I think this is right, that Tennessee is actually a leader in, in, in that effort. Yes. Uh, there have been a number of states that have come up with things, and instead of it costing, I don't know, three, four, five hundred dollars to do that, it, it actually comes down to twenty or, or, or thirty dollars. And I think the, well, the experience that we have seen there is something that we have to extrapolate and use in other parts of the country um, as well. Thank you, General Holder. Thank you.